I think that uh, neurology is such a field where uh, the different disease states uh, range from a disease state when no treatment options are available at all to a mess where multiple treatment options are available and that can be confusing and I understand when general neurologists may feel somewhat uh, uh, skeptical about the success we have in the field of treating MS. I would say the best thing for the patient living with MS is to be seen by an MS expert, MS specialist. I think that it probably would be my most sincere advice do this for your patients, allow them to see an MS specialist at least once a year or maybe twice a year uh, so that we can update the patients on the uh, new treatments available, on their personal response to their current treatment. I'm sure that general neurologists may not have enough time to review the MRIs together with the patients, but this is what we do, at least I do that and I can explain to the patient in the front of the MRI and in reviewing all the clinical presentation, is this a good idea to remain on the current disease-modifying therapy or is it a better idea to switch? And if the switch is recommended, what options are out there? So I think that it is the best service you really can do for them as patients to give them access to the uh, experts. The number one barrier I would see in adopting the new algorithms and treatments and uh, uh, knowledge of different options of disease modifying therapy in multiple sclerosis is time limitations. General neurologists are dealing with many different disease states and we are in a position currently that more and more pressure is being positioned on neurologists and more and more demands and decision making, uh, review of MRIs, uh, discussion of the outcomes seems to be just uh, on top of everything else we need to do. So therefore, because the treatment of MS is getting so very complex, and so very sophisticated, I think that it's not even fair to expect general neurologists to know all the minor details of management of MS and review of the outcomes on a regular basis. I think that this is a challenge, that the field evolved, developed so much, and becoming more and more complicated. And at the very same time, neurologist is expecting to see more patients within a day, which is not something that you can uh, offer the MS patients and expect this patient to be treated on the top level of available uh, therapies and options. Uh, I cannot spend less than 40 minutes with my MS patient for the follow-up, the new patient would require probably close to 90 minutes. Uh, and this is how long it takes. Can we expect every general neurologist to dedicate so much time? Probably not. It is not realistic because unless it's done in such a uh, intense, in-depth way, we may not have the best outcomes. That's why I would encourage my colleagues to uh, consider uh, using our expertise when it comes to consulting patients, even if it is once a year for the review of the MRIs and discussion of the outcomes of treatment. We hope that the outcome measures would help us uh, see the future. Whenever the medication is approved based on the two-year-long clinical trial, we obviously would like to know how this medication is likely to work for much longer because we talk about uh, nearly normal life expectancy in MS patients and we anticipate them to remain on those medications for longer than two years. Therefore, some of the outcome measures should help us understand the future 
uh, directions which this medication may take us if continued. In that respect, the volumetric studies in the brain volume are going to be very helpful. And uh, uh, I see it as a new tendency in including more volumetric studies in the uh, protocols of the clinical trials. Another thing that is very challenging but very exciting at the very same time is attempting and seeing confirmed disability improvement in the clinical trials. We used to think about long-term therapies for MS as tools to slow down progression. But the question our patients were asking repeatedly, but can I see improvement? And that is a very important question indeed. So some of the medication as a post hoc analysis implemented the evaluation to see if patients did show improvement. And if so, how reliable those data are. Mind you, those are post hoc analysis. They were not uh, primary outcomes in those clinical trials. But nevertheless, I see it as a very good tendency and reason for optimism that we hope to see improvement in the long-term outcomes when it comes to the disability. Obviously, more studies and longer studies are necessary to make us uh, feel confident about it.